the Hunter XC hybrid controller, battery operated. Let's check it out. I'm Sprinkler Nerd Andy, and you're watching Sprinkler TV. All right, let's get right into this, guys. I'm gonna flip the camera over. We're gonna unbox it. The thing you need to know about the XC hybrid is this word right here, hybrid. That means it can be, can be battery operated, okay? So that's what we're gonna talk about. Let's go ahead and unbox it. You've got your keys, you've got your wall anchors. Again, I always recommend using whatever wall anchors are suitable for the mounting location. It may or may not be those. You've got your zone charts, your instruction manual. This can be stuck inside the controller. Let's take it out. Set it over there. And let's see if this is locked out of the box or not. It is not, so we can go ahead and open it. Let's uncover. Let's take off the, uh, the front panel here. And cool, let's see. The first thing you're gonna notice is the battery compartment. I'm gonna hold it up so you can get a better look. Right there, three AA batteries. Okay, so this is, um, well, there's a couple, but this is one of the only more traditional looking controllers that you can run um, using battery. So if you have a new construction project or maybe you're at a pocket park or you have a city median and you don't have um, you know, an electrical uh, run out there, 120 power, you can run your entire irrigation system off this battery controller with one exception, okay? This is the most important part when you consider using battery operated controllers like the Hunter Node or any of the DIG products, really anything that's battery operated, you need to use a different type of solenoid. So I do have two solenoids here, okay? This, uh, this oops, we'll start with this one. This is the, the Hunter standard solenoid and you can see it's got two red wires and this is, because it's an AC solenoid, so there is no polarity on this solenoid. You can connect these two wires. Either one could go to the common or to the hot wire. However, if you're using this uh, hybrid controller that's battery operated, you need to have a DC solenoid, okay? So the solenoid looks exactly the same as the previous one that I showed you. I'll just put it up here as a comparison, right? The printing, everything, Guys are blurry today, there we go. Everything is the same, but you notice that there's a black and a red wire lead. And that indicates that this is a DC latching solenoid. Okay, and the really, well, I didn't actually mean for this to be a video about AC or DC, AC, DC solenoids, but a latching solenoid means it receives a pulse of electricity from the controller and it latches open. The pin in here goes up and then there is no more power on the wire. Okay, when the controller shuts it down, sends another um, burst of electricity, and this latches closed. And that's why it can last so long using batteries, is it's not being constantly charged. There's no power on the wire, except for when the controller says open, or when it says closed. So if you plan to retrofit your system to a DC, um, or a battery controller like this, and that's totally possible, you can have a, you know, 15 year old irrigation system and you can switch it to be battery operated. You just have to change your solenoids. And I'm not just speaking about Hunter. Um, most every manufacturer, Toro, Rainbird, Hunter, K-Rain, Weathermatic, Nelson, Orbit, they all make DC latching solenoids. So you can actually take this Hunter XC hybrid controller and you can put it on a system that has anybody's valves. This controller can run Rainbird valves, Toro valves, K-Rain valves, Weathermatic valves, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that you have a DC latching solenoid. And these aren't these aren't cheap. So if you've got 20 zones, it could cost you, you know, a couple hundred dollars to switch out um, all the solenoids, but you have to switch out the solenoids or the system won't work, all right? Otherwise, it's a pretty standard controller. This model here has six zones. There is a master valve spot, there is a sensor term, Terminal, so you can use any of Hunter's click uh, click sensors. You know, it's got your run times, your start times, your days of the week, manual operation. It runs just like you would expect a traditional controller to operate. Okay, so that's it. You really want to make sure you have a DC latching solenoids. Then you can run your battery controller, and you put your um, 
battery is right in there. It's lockable. The uh, zone chart can be mounted right in here on Velcro. Okay. You've got quick instructions on the back and then this guy can be mounted like that. Pretty simple stuff. All right, so if we can help you with any of your Hunter questions, or if you wanna to convert to battery, or if you have an existing system that uses a different manufacturer of battery operator controllers, we're happy to help, it, help you. So just contact us by phone, chat, email, text message, and uh, yeah, till the next Sprinkler Supply Store product overview. Happy sprinkling. We'll talk to you then.